Spa, the Honourable Member for Newton North Delta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I rise and uh, speak on a bill, and the very title of which I find quite abhorrent. And the title of the bill being Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Cultural Practices Act. I don't know since when this kind of language has started to enter the House when we talk about legislation that is, that is going to impact the lives of many people. First of all, let me say, Mr. Speaker, there is nobody, there is nobody that will tolerate on this side of the House or that side of the House any barbaric practices. But to say that barbaric uh, practices are embedded in one culture or the other seems a little bit bizarre to me and seems in the present context to be very, very inflammatory in light of the comments made by backbenchers and comments made by the Prime Minister and other people. But I want to take it down a tone, uh, Mr. Speaker, because I take this issue very, very seriously. Gender-based violence is a serious issue. And I think all of us know that there is enough research out there to show that it crosses all socio ethnic, cultural boundaries. And we always, I think, in many ways, excuse it when we put the word cultural in front of it as how somehow that only happens over there, doesn't happen right across our communities. And um, also want to say at this stage, Mr. Speaker, it uh, seems a bit strange to me that I have got up to speak on this bill without mentioning something that is significant that has happened in my riding over the last 48 hours. We've had five shootings in my riding in the last five hours, Mr. Speaker, and um, where the RCMP has brought in extra police, they're working very, very hard. The community is very, very worried. So when I look at the context, and I keep thinking there are so many things we should be addressing right now, right here in this country, and uh, my heart goes out to my community, goes out to all those who are worried, and my thanks to the RCMP who are putting their lives at risk in order to make our community safe right now. But there is a linkage, Mr. Speaker, as to what I'm talking about in Surrey and this bill, and it's called resources. Many times I have stood in this house and ask for additional resources for the city of Surrey so we can get the additional policing that we need because we have incredibly low ratios. And it's those kind of resources that help us do preventative work and stop the kind of shootings that have been taking place over the last 48, 72 hours. But when we talk about domestic violence, I want to talk about it there as well. First of all, let me assure everybody across the aisle before anybody decides to point fingers, because I've had that experience before, there is nobody on this side that supports gender-based violence, no matter which cultural group you belong to. There is nobody on this side of the house that supports child marriages or forced marriages. And there is nobody in this house on this side of the house that supports polygamy. So now that we have got those issues out there, I'm going to tackle each one of these uh, at a time. When it comes to domestic violence, we know, we know that we have laws right now. And if passing one more law to say all domestic violence shall end would actually eradicate it, I think all of us would be rushing to vote. But we have bills, we have legislation already, we have laws already, but what is lacking right now, I would say, are resources and enforcement. Resources because we know, we know that if you want the victims to come forward, you've got to provide them with the support system. And this bill doesn't do that. As a matter of fact, this bill could have the collateral damage, which my colleagues across the way use sometimes, the collateral damage of actually making the very victims 
go underground and not speak up. Because they know that if they speak up, either they themselves, the victim, or their children could be deported and criminalized. So once again, one thing I know as a teacher and counselor, that if we want to really talk about domestic violence to ending gender-based violence, it starts with education, it starts with information, it starts with having laws that we actually enforce. But for that, we need people to come forward with evidence. And, but we need to put a support system in place so that the victims, the women and the children, have safety and security while they are going through the system and tackling the abuse that is going on at home. And also, it is very, very offensive to see the word, of course, any kind of domestic violence is barbaric. But to relate it to culture then, I think is going over the top and is the kind of politics I've been hearing a lot about, whether it's talking about brownies and whiteies or whether it's sort of uh, brandishing all Muslims right across this globe as being anti-women or the extreme, extreme reach of C-51 and not even allowing the privacy commissioner to come and give evidence because it might not agree with my colleagues across the way. So we already have laws and if they need it to be tightened up, that's where the focus should be and if they need to be resourced, that's where my colleagues should be bringing forward legislation if we really want to tackle gender-based violence. You know, Mr. Speaker, it's my understanding that we already have laws to prevent forced marriages and child marriages. There is an age of consent before the age of 16, and you know, surely we don't, we don't have laws that put up with people forcing themselves on minors. We have legislation like that. And so once again, this is another one of those window dressing bills to appeal to a base where they believe they can collect millions of dollars from hardworking Canadians. And the other issue I want to tackle this time is the issue of polygamy. Now, Mr. Speaker, forgive me if I don't have this right, and I'm sure you will correct me if I don't, but it's my understanding that in Canada, it, and by the way, this law, this legislation, is not for what happens in other countries, it's what happens within Canada, it's a Canadian law to apply to those living in Canada, that in Canada we actually have legis uh, we actually have laws that prevent you from being married to more than one person at a time. Now we live in a country where people get married, the marriages don't work out, and then they end up getting divorced, and then we're not saying they don't get married again, but under our Canadian law, you can only have one wife at a time. And I actually have a very vivid memory of this because when there was a case going on in uh, BC over Bountiful, uh, I was actually one of the witnesses. And it sort of absolutely shocked me today, and when I was reading this bill, that we have a government that believes polygamy is okay in Canada. And that's why they're bringing this bill forward. Well, Mr. Speaker, this is absolute nonsense. We do not have polygamy in our country. It's one marriage. And if you want to get married again because your marriage doesn't work out, that's okay. But it's one marriage at a time. So we, do, we already have laws against polygamy. So really, what is this bill all about? Once again, this bill what the Conservatives wanted to achieve in this bill, they could have done other ways, but it wouldn't have given them the sound bites they needed to go into the media and say, we are against barbaric cultural practices. Mr. Speaker, we on this side are against barbaric practices, period, without any modifiers and without any excuses. Thank you.